All right, guys, thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in Judges chapter 10 today. So, I don't know what it's like where you are at, but I live out here in New Mexico in the desert, and we have got like three or four inches of snow on the ground and like another four or five, six inches coming. And so, we've been busy doing snow removal and all kinds of stuff. You don't get a chance to do a lot out here, but. You know, it's a chance to make some money, and to do some work, and to, you know, get out there and do it, guys. Um, anyways, I really wanted to share this with you. I wrote it last night, and um, let's get into it. Judges 10, let's pray. Father, God, Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord, for waking me up today, Lord, for the ability to be able to get out there and to work, to support myself and my family, and to... to to do a job that needs done, to help people be safe, and to not be injured out there. I'm sorry, that was a cattail. I hope that doesn't happen again. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for patience, grace, your mercy, Lord. Thank you, God, for waking me up, for giving me a family, Lord, for giving me loved ones, Lord. For giving me a, a mama and a stepdad, Lord, that I love so much. Um, I want to ask that you bless this video, Lord, that anybody watching it at any time is able to feel fired up for you, God. And I pray this in your holy and mighty name. And by the way, what a wonderful world you gave us, Lord. Somebody out there shout amen. Let's jump into Judges 10. <clears throat> crazy cat tail. After Abimelech, there arose to save, tra save Israel, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel twenty-three years, and he died and was buried in Shamir. After him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel twenty-two years. Now he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys. They also had thirty towns, which are called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Kaman. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord, and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for eighteen years. All the children of Israel, who were on the other side of the Jordan, in the land of the Amorites and Gilead, Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also, against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, did I not deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the people of Ammon, and from the Philistines? Also, the Sidonians, and Amalekites, and Manites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me, and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Go. And cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day, we pray. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Then the people of Ammon gathered together and encamped in Gilead. And the children of Israel assembled together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people 
the leaders of Gilead said to one another, Who is the man who will begin the fight against the people of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. All right, guys. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> that part where he talks about, where is it at here? Right here in um, 16, Judges 10, 16. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. It's a powerful verse, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Thank you guys for letting me share with y'all. Silly page. <laughs> there we go, guys. All right. So, thank you guys, like I said, for letting me share with y'all. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day where you're at. You know, God really has made an amazing world for us. The The way the seasons work and the, and the cycles and just the... It's all so beautiful. Okay, so check this out, guys. Have you ever got really mad, because I know I have, that it seems like all the news, TV, papers, internet, wherever, ever put on any time or focus on is bad stuff? Well, interestingly enough, we come to see something here in chapter 10 of Judges, and that is that that mindset has kind of been in place for a while. We see in Israel when things are going good, when they're going very good, that that hardly anything is mentioned, talked of, or recorded. You know, it'll be like so-and-so reigned in Israel for 30 years and it was good. That was, that's it. That's all they tell us, right? So you would think that when things are going good, maybe somebody would think to start recording or repeating the many things that go on when stuff is actually going right, you know? And that was just kind of a thought that I wanted to share with you because this chapter really brought that to my mind. And Anyways, guys, 10, 1 through 5. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he dwelt in Shamir in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel 23 years and he died and was buried in Shamir. After him arose Jair, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel 22 years. Now he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. They also had 30 towns, which are called Havath Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Kaman. So this is exactly what I mean. We had these two guys right here. We see these two judges, Tola and Jair, who combined reigned for 55 years. And sadly, all that we know is basically the time that they were in power and that they were raised to that position by God. They were important for their subterfuge in the face of wickedness like we saw in Abimelech. Tola was a deliverer. Abimelech, as we had said, was the antithesis. Jair, who did God's will, was himself blessed and fruitful, having 30 sons, while he was followed by Jephthah, a man with one child, and excess pride, which led to a vow that stopped his lineage in its tracks. All in all, in Judges, we see six judges that are described with truly few words. And so that kind of harkens back to that thought that I shared with you. You know, and that's all that really was, was just a thought. That, that that mindset of, you know, we always... We always put so much, not not so much stock, but we always spend so much time talking about the bad stuff. And all too often, it's stuff that's already happened, so there's nothing that us talking about it can do to change anything, Right. But, but we just, we spend so much time sometimes talking about that, whereas it'll be like, oh yeah, do you remember when we were at so-and-so's birthday party? Oh yeah, that was a good time, and that'll be it. That's really, you know what I mean? We spend so much time sometimes, and, and I understand because I do the same thing, because you want to talk about, you tend to talk more about what bothers you than the things that are going good. 
And it's just, it's kind of, it's a, it's a very human thing, I think. Anyways, guys, on that note, 10-4. 10-4, good buddy. Now, he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. They also had 30 towns, which are called Havat Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. The literary use of repetition here really upsells the point of just how great this man's wealth and power were. I mean, 30 sons with 30 steeds, wielding control over 30 towns. That certainly paints a very stately image of a, of a, of a, of a family or a clan that is, that is in control. 10-6, guys. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. Gods with a lowercase g, y'all. If I could make it lower than a lowercase g, I would. But that's all that we can do. Previous accounts and judges of Israel's foolish dalliances with false pagan gods only mention the balls and the ashtrass. Here, though, we see more pronounced than a sadly growing list of all these different idols that Israel and its people are fooling with. In this growing list of false gods, Israel's downward spiral is undeniable. It's so evident. Their continued violations of their covenant with God continue to build and build and build. We witness peace in coming times to be more and more short-lived in nature. Jephthah only brings six years of peace, not a generation's worth. Also, sadly, in time, we will see that same man, Jephthah, sinfully and hostily, or hastily, I mean, sacrifice his own daughter. This is how far they were from God, that they didn't even really know who he was anymore. They didn't even know who God was or what it was that God wanted from them, what it was that God wanted if you did wrong. They didn't even know that. They didn't even know the man. They didn't even know God anymore. And that's what's so powerful, so sad, and, uh, and hopefully, in a, in a painfully bittersweet sort of way, inspirational. Because that's what we have to do with that. 10.15, guys. And the children of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems best to you. Only deliver us this day, we pray. So like a child who is only apologizing to get back their toy or something that they want, when Israel cries out to God, what they want is to just be delivered. They're not crying out so that they can serve the Lord. They're not crying out, please, Father God, let me come from this situation so I may be in your will, so I may carry out your will. No. No, their repentant cry was only voiced to save their own hides. It was only about their own discomfort and their own hardships. That's what they were crying out to God about still. 1016, guys, last one I'm going to share with you today. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul could no longer endure the misery of Israel. Remember when I said we were going to talk about that? Well, we're going to talk about that. As a matter of fact, I know I've reread it like, what, three times now? I'm going to reread it one more time, guys. So this is Judges 10, 16, the last one I'm going to share with you. And I think it's a powerful verse. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul, God's soul, could no longer endure the misery of Israel. It's not really funny, but have you ever heard the term sad sack? You know, somebody's just a sad sack. It's not really funny, but I think that's kind of kind of where God was at with looking at Israel at this point. So anyways, guys, the verses leading up to this one are the only account in Judges where Israel not only cries out, but they also, it is accompanied by their putting away of these idols, these, these pagan deities, these false gods. Everywhere else, just a cry had worked. And so here, 
we see that God could no longer endure the misery of Israel, is what it says. Which really sounds kind of compassionate, doesn't it? You know, he just couldn't... Oh, man, you guys are just... But it's not quite like that, see? So before you think that, please know that the verb here translated as endure is also found elsewhere in Scripture of the Old Testament where it describes either impatience or abhorrence. So now I'm going to reread that verse to you. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul could no longer abhor the misery of Israel. He could no longer have patience for the misery of Israel, is what it is saying. So, that's right. Yah, our loving, gracious, merciful Father God, he had tired. He had grown impatient, in fact, with Israel. These people were set aside to be his people. God abhorred their fake and insincere confessions. He was weary due to the constant exploitation of his unending goodness. And while nothing can change God's goodness, what can change is the availability of that goodness. Guys, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week. And you know you want to hear a little bit more from God. And even if you don't, I promise if I make you laugh because I look goofy or whatever, if you can put up with me talking about it for 15 or 20 minutes out of the day, I promise I'm going to say something that God wants you to hear. All right, guys. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, man. If you want to share it, my heart goes out to you. Um, any prayer requests, any comments, guys, put those down here into the comment section. We'll come together. Even if you don't want to mention it, just say, Lord knows. We'll still come together and pray for it, man. God loves to hear the prayers that we have to pray for others. Those are the prayers that got me here, guys. Anyways, I love you. God loves y'all so much more, man. And I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.